Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar on visual content marketing. This is the first webinar in our three-part series on content marketing. My name is Dorothy Davis, and I'm the Marketing Manager for Monsoon Commerce. I will be your host for today's webinar. I'll introduce today's presenter, Lisa Satora, in just a moment, but before we begin, I'd like to go over a few tips and tricks for using the GoToWebinar interface. I'm sure some of you may already be familiar with the program, but in case you aren't, here are a few things to keep in mind. All attendees will be muted to, during today's session, so please use the questions tab to submit written questions that you may have during the presentation. We will have a full Q&A at the end of the webinar, but we may also respond periodically throughout the session if need be to any questions, so free, feel free to go ahead and submit those questions as you have them. And if you're using the audio through GoToWebinar, that is if you're currently using a headset or speakers, consider closing your email and messenger programs or any other programs that require bandwidth to ensure optimal functionality. And now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our presenter for today's webinar, Lisa Satora, the founder and CEO of Lisa Satora International and WhatDoISell.com. Lisa is an e-commerce marketing expert who specializes in helping online merchants define the right product line and marketing strategies for business expansion. For nearly a decade, Lisa has worked with entrepreneurs in seven countries and over 2,500 niche markets to build thriving online stores. And as a former online seller, Lisa has firsthand knowledge of the opportunity and the challenges that exist in the e-commerce space. I've personally heard Lisa speak before. She's absolutely fantastic. So I am thrilled to have Lisa with us today to share her knowledge and experience with all of you. And now I will turn it over to Lisa to get going. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you, Dorothy, for that very warm welcome. I'm very excited to be here today for part one of our content marketing webinar series. What we're going to talk about today is really the biggest change that we've seen in the way e-commerce market businesses will market in the coming year and moving forward. It really is a redefinition of marketing as we've known it up until this point. So in today's webinar, I'm going to be sharing how to do visual content marketing, and it's going to be very actionable, very doable, and everyone will leave this webinar, our attendees will leave this webinar with some very specific, easy to implement action items that you can use to start generating more customers, attracting new customers, driving traffic to your website, and converting more sales from the steps that you'll learn in today's webinar. So I'm gonna just start by going over our agenda, what we're gonna talk about today, we're going to first talk about why content is essential. You know, up until this point, it was really a nice to have. Now in 2013, it is a must have. We're going to talk about the three content channels. Now today we're going to talk specifically about visual content marketing, but I want to give everyone an overview of what content really means as it applies to your e-commerce business. We're going to talk about the rise of the visual web. And as I said, this is the biggest change in online marketing that has happened since the revolution of social media. And I'm specifically going to show you how to develop engaging content using Pinterest, YouTube, infographics, and a new one, Instagram. So we're going to talk about these four areas today. And I'm going to show you how to leverage visual content across multiple marketing channels. Everyone listening to this webinar today, I know, does not have an excess of time. And so it's really important when you're doing your marketing that you want to be able to, first of all, have a simple strategy that is effective. And secondly, be able to leverage any investment of time and resources that you put into marketing. And visual content lends itself to that perfectly. So with that, let's get started talking about why content is the new brand currency, because everyone wants content. Your customers want content. They want to know how to use your products. They want to know tips on what the products can do, how it's going to benefit them. Google wants content. They reward websites that have high quality content. Google has come out and said that we want the e-commerce customer not to just go to an e-commerce site to look for something to buy, but we want that customer to actually go and get value out of a website, even if they don't make a purchase. And so your content is rewarded on your website from Google when you add that content in, it attracts Google like a magnet. Content's also very important if you are selling in a marketplace to use to drive traffic to your products on Amazon, 
eBay, buy.com, whatever marketplaces that you sell in. Content also feeds social media. And I know there's, you know, all this talk about social media and do, is there ROI and does it really drive traffic? The reality of it is, is that social media is here to stay. And as an online business owner, you need to be able to know how to create content so that your business has a presence in these different social media channels. There's a great quote here from Brian Rhodes, who is the strategist for global content at Intel. He says, today's web is an endless 24 by seven cycle fed by content and social actions. And in this cycle, brands are realizing that content is currency. So I wanna set the framework for this webinar so that people are thinking about the fact that content really is an asset for your business. Content helps to build brand awareness. It helps with customer acquisition. It leads directly to lead generation, and it also has a big impact in customer retention and loyalty. So there's many benefits to your business when you invest in a content strategy. So what is content? Well, there are three content channels. Now, today's content really is everything pu you publish on the web. So we've got the social segment, which is Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and crowdsource content. We'll be talking about that in another upcoming webinar. We have visual, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. This is the newest landscape that we are looking at in online marketing. Visual content is Pinterest, it's YouTube, it's infographics, and it's Instagram. And then we have really what started content on the web, which is the written content, blogs, articles, email marketing, and press releases. So the biggest content change for 2013 and beyond, and it actually started last year in 2012, is the rise of what we call the visual web. Why do we care about having a visual marketing strategy? It's not that it's the latest and greatest. It's not that it's the cool thing to do. It's because as human beings, we're very visual creatures. Oftentimes we'd rather see the message than read it. In fact, approximately 65% of us are visual learners. And so getting your marketing message out in a content-based format appeals to human nature. It's not just a web thing. It's how we consume information. We're also in a pretty text-saturated web these days. There's a lot of text and not a lot of time to read. So it's much more easy to create content visually and have your customers or your leads consume that content. It's also visual content is much more shareable than text. The studies show that people will share images and share visual marketing content much more frequently than they will sharing text-based content. And basically you can say more with less. You know, the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, if a picture is worth a thousand words, a Pinterest image, as you will soon see, can be worth thousands of dollars to your business. And finally, the last holdup for this rise of the visual web up until this point has really been technology. Nowadays, we've got increased computing power that's more affordable to the masses. Internet bandwidth is, st is sturdy enough that people can download image heavy product pages, they can stream videos. All of this wasn't possible for the average online shopper even a few years ago. So that's really been the tipping point for the rise of the visual web. And actually 70% of internet users now consume visual content on a regular basis. So we're gonna start first by talking about our first visual content marketing channel, and that is Pinterest. Now, probably all of you have heard of Pinterest, but Pinterest is one of the most misunderstood marketing platforms that I've really ever seen. Uh, so many people think that Pinterest is just this little pin board where people pin crafts and recipes. But what Pinterest really is, is a very powerful visual content marketing platform. Now, what you're looking at here is what we call the Pinterest homepage. When you log into Pinterest, you see a page full of images that people who you are following on Pinterest have pinned. And you can see here, it's a very heavy product-based site. Well, there's a reason for that. 70% of Pinterest's 11 million plus users actually use Pinterest for shopping inspiration and to keep up with trends. So as e-commerce merchants, we have a target audience who's very interested in the products that we want to showcase on Pinterest. 66% of Pinterest users regularly follow and repin retailers. Unlike Facebook, where you know there's that delicate balance of am I marketing too much on Facebook? You know, am I turning off my customers because they come to Facebook to hang out and chat? And here I'm trying to get my brand message out. 
Pinterest welcomes brands. They welcome the imagery, which is critical to converting e-commerce sales. And not only that, Pinterest has gained a reputation as a place where you go when you want to find something cool to buy. Pinterest is currently the third largest social network right behind Facebook and Twitter. And they've got 23 million unique monthly visitors and more than a billion monthly page views. Now here's the number that you have to pay attention to. Pinterest currently refers more traffic to external websites than YouTube, Google Plus, and LinkedIn combined. What that means is that Pinterest users are very active in coming to the site, seeing an image that's linked to a product page, and clicking on that image to go over to that external website, to go over to the marketplace, and look at the products that are being offered there. So this is a way within two easy clicks, and I'm going to show you how to do this, to get a ton of very interested traffic to your website. Pinterest users are very purchase intensive. They are 79% more likely to purchase items that they saw pinned on Pinterest versus Facebook users. And 16 of the top 20 Pinterest users' highest affinity categories are retail related. So they love retail. They love discovering new products and they've got money to spend. Comscore did a study on this and found that Pinterest users rank second on the buying power index, meaning they've got money to actually spend. Second only to LinkedIn, which we know has a lot of corporate CEOs that sways that buying power index for LinkedIn to number one. Facebook, by the way, is number four. The Pinterest marketing community is really powerful. Now think about this. If you sold these boots and you had 11,857 people repin the boots that you sell in your online store out to all those followers, you had 1,693 likes and 54 comments from one image that you pinned that took you less than a minute for free. That's a pretty amazing marketing community. You know, here we have a, a great uh, Cuisinart uh, Sunday maker, and you've got a thousand repins on this image. And you can see the people who repin this can actually do your marketing for you. I may need one for, oh, let's say Mother's Day. I mean, you can't buy this kind of marketing. Well, you can in Google, but it's very expensive. It, it doesn't matter what you're selling. People are repinning your images and every time they repin one of these images, that's another way that your marketing just goes viral because your products are being propagated out to the larger Pinterest community. Pinterest converts sales. Now, here's an example of a watch that was pinned on uh, Pinterest. It's being sold on Amazon. And you can see here that this watch pinned to Pinterest sold out, currently unavailable. Now we work with a lot of clients with their Pinterest marketing, and this is something that I hear over and over and over again. We weren't getting any traction on this product. We pinned it to Pinterest and all of a sudden it started selling or we pinned it to Pinterest. We didn't do any other marketing except for listed on Amazon, listed on our website, and it sold out. So you can very effectively drive targeted traffic specifically to your product pages on Amazon, on eBay, or on your own website, and Pinterest users will click through, they will see your product, and if they like it, they will make the purchase right then and there, and they're two clicks away from your product page at any given time. So I know everybody's thinking, well, okay, that sounds great, but I've heard Pinterest is just for women, or I've heard Pinterest is just for, you know, crafters or something. So who's really on Pinterest? Well, as you can see here, brands of all styles and sizes are on Pinterest. Now, it is, the demographics are made up of 80% women, 20% men, and growing. But here's the thing. If you look at these brands and some of the examples I'm going to show you today, you'll see that there are many brands that are dedicated to male uh, interest websites and uh, stores that cater specifically to the non-female demographic that do very well on Pinterest. But here's something that you really need to think about. Women make or influence 85% of all purchasing decisions, even if there is a male living with them in the same house. So 
the fact that there's 80% women on Pinterest and actively using it, a good thing for online sales. So Pinterest is very serious about business. They recently set up a Pinterest business account. It's a free account. You can go there and register at this URL. And what you will get is, you can register here at business.pinterest.com. You will get a pinterest.com forward slash your business name. So pinterest.com forward slash Nike or forward slash REI. That's going to be your Pinterest URL. They have tons of tools and brand guidelines, things to help you market your business on Pinterest. And they are going to really expand the business aspect of Pinterest in 2013. Now, if you're currently on Pinterest and you're a registered brand, but you registered in the early days of Pinterest, you still want to go to this URL, very important, and you want to convert your existing Pinterest account to a business account so that you can take advantage of all of the upcoming features that Pinterest will be implementing for businesses. So I'm going to show you how to create a powerful Pinterest presence, one that's going to market and sell your products. So Pinterest is basically made up of what we call boards. And this is what your Pinterest presence will look like. This is REI, obviously. Pinterest boards are these individual boards here that are themed for different subject. So REI's got REI exclusives, gifts for hikers and campers. They've got a snow day, fitness gifts. You can have as many boards as you want. You can theme them any way that you want. The caveat is you need to think about who your target audience is and what they are interested in. Because when someone lands on your Pinterest presence, this is really a showcase of what your brand represents. These top two boards are very important. This is a big mistake people make. These top two boards are your anchor boards. You want to make sure that you've got these top two rows filled out with interesting boards, the most important boards. You can see here that REI is focusing right now on snow sports because we're in the winter season. You can see that they're showcasing some of their exclusives. You can see that they've got a gift board. So you want these top two anchor boards to really engage people who land on your Pinterest boards and to really represent your brand. Don't do a whole bunch of boards that are empty and I'm gonna show you how to fill these out really easily. Make sure that you fill out your top two anchor boards and make the most important things that are gonna attract people to your Pinterest presence, put those in these top two boards. Now, what do you put in these boards? That's the big question I get. It's like, okay, so what do I put in here? Well, you can do many things. You absolutely can do a product showcase for your business. So here we have REI, this is one of their boards. It's REI exclusives. It's made up of a bunch of different individual pins. Right here, these are your individual pins. And you can absolutely have boards that are specifically dedicated to your products in your store. But it's also very important to have boards that pull in images from multiple sources. You don't want your Pinterest presence to look like just one big advertising website. You want your potential customers, people who are discovering your brand, to be engaged with content, with visual content, not just yours, but other people's. So you can see here that REI has a board called Outdoor Geek. They've pulled in some cool products that they don't sell from other websites. You, they've pulled in blog posts, they pulled in articles on some of their boards so that people who discover their board can learn more about, you know, some of the different uh, aspects of outdoor living. So when people come to the REI boards, it's like, wow, cool. I can just sit here and go through and look at all of this content that's related to REI and outdoor living. But if you go back and you look at these REI exclusives, it takes me two clicks on one of these pins, one, two, to get over to the REI product page and buy these boots. I'm going to talk about pins in just a minute, but I just want to show you another powerful feature of your Pinterest account. And this is your Pinterest profile. If you're a business account, you have the opportunity to verify your URL, your website URL, on Pinterest. And what this does, this is a follow link coming from Pinterest. Remember, the third largest social network site on the web 
directly over to your website. So you've got a very relevant, very important inbound link. 99% of people don't know about this or don't do this. So don't set up your Pinterest account without verifying your link. And it's super easy to do. All you need to do is go into the settings section of your Pinterest account and there's a little wizard that will walk you through it. For those of you who sell on the marketplaces and you have a website, cannot verify a website or a marketplace store URL uh, unless you have a URL that's redirecting to your marketplace store because basically what happens is, is Pinterest is going to give a little piece of code that has to live somewhere on a website hosted on a web server. So let's say you want to direct people to your Amazon store. That's okay. All you need to do is buy a domain name, uh, have it hosted somewhere on your web host and drop that little snippet of code there. And I don't want to get too technical today because Pinterest has a great tutorial on how to do this at their help section of Pinterest.com. So verify your Pinterest profile and you want to obviously make brand your site to your specific brand and you want to write a nice keyword rich brand profile. REI did a so-so job of writing a keyword rich brand profile. Uh, I would have uh, had them do more specific keywords that describe what they do. So when you're creating your brand profile, you only have about 300 characters. You really want to pack a punch in here and make sure that you have the keywords that people would use in this profile that they would search for in Google because these Pinterest profiles get picked up in Google and more and more we're seeing Pinterest profile results in Google search. So think about how you need to present your business with a keyword rich profile here. So these pins I've been talking about, what the heck are these? So basically here's how it works. Uh, he, this is a, a, a student of mine, uh, Orlean company. She has a website. She sells on multiple marketplaces. On her website, she has installed the pin it button. And so when someone comes to her website and they like a particular piece of jewelry that she sells, they can click pin it. And what it will do is it will pin the image of the jewelry to their Pinterest boards. Now, Orly can also do the same thing to market her products. And this is what you want to do to market your products. You want to pin a image at the product page level. So you always want to pin on that page where the customer will go directly to hit that add to cart button. The biggest mistake people make is they pin to the home page or they pin to the category page. We don't want to do that. We want that Pinterest user to see your item, love it, click on the pin and come directly to this product page to buy. So once Orly clicks on this, she pins her image to her Pinterest boards. It's going to create this pin. And as you can see here, she has the description of the product. We'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. And you can see that it shows the URL where this image was pinned from. And that is her website URL. So what happens is, is her followers will see, oh, wow, she's pinned this new bracelet and they can do a couple different things. They can click through and go directly to her website and buy it, or they can click like on this pin on Pinterest and they can share it by repinning it to their followers. It's as simple as that to make a pin go viral. So if I were to click repin and share this image, it would go out to all of my followers and I basically for free have promoted this bracelet for Oralee and company. That's what your Pinterest followers are going to do for you. It is so simple and so fast and so easy for people to share and to get to your website that this is one of the features that people love about Pinterest the most. Now, when you're creating these pins, and by the way, you can pin anything. I highly recommend that everything that you pin to Pinterest, you use a good product image. Now, I know everyone in our audience today already has high quality product images on their website in the marketplace, so that's not going to be an issue. I want to give you some tips on creating 
highly pinnable and repinnable pins. So each of these pins is searchable in Google and on Pinterest. So for example, when you're creating a pin, you want to create a pin title. So in this situation, Colorful Cuisinart Smart Power Blender. This is the product that is being sold. Then you want to add what I call a pin description. Great way to brighten up a kitchen. So the first thing should always be the name of your product. The second thing should be a little color commentary that gives some oomph to your pin. So how could I use it? What's cool about this product? What new features in this product? And then if you want to, you can use hashtags just like Twitter that will give your pins better indexing. Now I want to caution you. On Pinterest, all things in moderation is your motto. Do not use hashtags on every single pin because when people come to your boards, they're going to see just this slew of pins with hashtags. So use hashtags on some of your pins. Don't use hashtags on other pins. But this needs to be keyword searchable, meaning if people come to Pinterest and they're looking for ideas for blenders, you want to have the name of the product with the keywords that people would use to find it in your pin title. So some people will say here, oh, pretty blender or cool. That's not for businesses. The Pinterest users can do that if they want, but for you, you want to use a keyword rich title. Now you will find things um, pinned to Pinterest that don't have this formula. I share this formula with you because it's the fastest and easiest way to do it. It's the most effective and it's something that you can train someone in your organization to do. But you can see here some of these other pins that have a more lengthy pin description also get liked and pinned as well. When you get to this point here, you're getting a little bit too much text. So keep it to two, three lines at the most. This pin happened to get a lot of repins, but in general, two and three line description pins tend to get repinned the most. So you can see, again, this is very, very powerful. You've got a high quality image, you have a two to three line description, and then you let the Pinterest community do the rest of your marketing for you. And remember, all of this is indexed in Google as well. So how do you get these followers? Because Pinterest is really built on you having followers who then repin your products. Well, it's very easy to get followers. So for one thing, Pinterest is not like Facebook. It's like Twitter, so it's non-reciprocal. So you can follow anyone you want on Pinterest and anyone can follow you. And it's not like, oh, do you wanna be my friend? Should I ask them to be my friend? And it's not like the business page where you just like it and forget it. Because every time a follower logs in, they see what you have recently pinned on Pinterest. You can connect with your Facebook friends right now you're connecting with your personal profile. I need to share that with everyone. Um, some of you who have businesses do use your personal profile for business. I use my personal profile for business as well. So what I did is I just connected my Pinterest account to my Facebook account because I have my business associates on my Facebook account. However, the best way to get followers is two things. Number one, announce to the world that you are on Pinterest. So you're going to have a follow us on Pinterest icon on your website right here. This is what ModCloth did. Follow us on Pinterest. And you are also going to install this pin it button on your product pages. So if you look down here, this is William Sonoma product page. You can see that they've installed the pin it widget on their product page. So everybody who comes here can pin this if they like it. And it's super easy for someone to come and follow you on Pinterest. One click of the button, if they like what they see, if they like your brand, if they're interested in the products and the category that you sell in, it's an easy follow because it's non-reciprocal. It's that they don't have to ask your permission to follow. Setting up the pin it button on your product pages, using other social media channels to promote your Pinterest account. So Pinterest.com forward slash your business name. You will be surprised at how quickly your followers 
and your following builds because of the ease of which Pinterest has set up this whole structure. Another great way to get followers is to go to Pinterest and search by keywords to find other Pinterest users who are interested in your particular business category. So if you sell products related to snow sports, you go to Pinterest and you start typing in the keywords for snow sports and you look at some of those pins and look at some of the followers for people who are repinning those types of pins and you just start following them. Here, you can go to any Pinterest user's account, click on followers, see who's following them, and you can start following those people to build your community. Because a Pinterest community, will you'll get a notification from Pinterest that someone is following you, and Pinterest users love to follow people back because it's not a high cost follow. So you can easily build up your Pinterest following, and once you do that, the viral and compound interest nature of Pinterest takes off. Now, finally, I wanna share with you a feature that I call the Pinterest Marketplace. And you may have seen this, those of you who are on Pinterest, these pins with little price banners. What we're looking at right here is up here in the gifts section, if you add a price to your pin, a dollar amount, like $20 right here to your pin, it will put this little price banner up at the top. This is really cool because when people are looking specifically for a gift on Pinterest and they're looking at a specific price range, they can click on this gifts category on Pinterest and it sorts all of the pins that have banners in them by price. The thing you need to know about this is as an e-commerce merchant, you may feel like you want to put a price banner on every single pin. Don't do it. Mix it up. Have some pins with price banners, have some pins without price banners. If you put price banners on everything, what does it look like you're doing? Just blatant, spammy advertising. If you have price banners on some of your selected items, then you've mixed it up and you've provided valuable content to the Pinterest community. So we're going to need to move along here because we've got some other things to cover. But before we do, I want to share with you your action assignment to get up and running on Pinterest. Very simple steps. Number one, set up a Pinterest for Business account, verify your website URL, and start building your anchor boards. Build some themed boards, get some product images, pin directly from your product page, whether it's your website, eBay, Amazon, and spend maybe 10 minutes a day pinning products to Pinterest. It's so easy to get traction in just 10 minutes a day and do it consistently. So don't pin for an hour on Friday and nothing for the rest of the week. 10 minutes a day and you will start to build a following on Pinterest that will attract new customers, that will drive traffic to your website and to your marketplace stores, and that will start converting those pinned images over to sales. Now we're gonna switch gears here to the next big thing, which is YouTube, because there's a video explosion going on. We're at a point in 2013 where this is the year of video. 48 of the 50 top online retailers now are currently using product videos on their site compared to 16% in 2011. There's been many different studies done on this and product videos actually have the potential to boost conversion rates anywhere from 10 to 40% on average. So the power of video, very important. The power of video on YouTube is even more important because YouTube is the second largest search engine and people go there looking for product reviews, product information. An SEO optimized YouTube video can also land your business on the first page of Google for free. Now, if you look here at this Ninja Blender, you will see that this person did a review of the Ninja Blender. This is the first page ranking on Google. You will see here that it actually was the first entry in organic search on Google. Their website is probably back on page 30, but their video, which then drives traffic to their website, 
was able to earn them a first page ranking because Google wants videos on their first page. This is a, a client of mine. They sell on eBay. They sell collectibles. Taught them to do videos several years ago. They just took off with it. And you can see here, and they are a two-person operation. They did a video of a Santa that they sell. 120,000 views on this video. And you can see right here that they have a little subtitle on their video that says simply available at stores.ebay.com forward slash connectables. Think about this for a minute. 120,000 people saw this video and saw this little video annotation. They get a tremendous amount of traffic from these YouTube videos. In the few years that they've been doing these videos, their YouTube channel has received over 1 million views on product videos alone. This is free traffic that has seen their products, their store, and going directly to their store. Now, each of you should have a YouTube channel for your business. Just like Pinterest, it gives you youtube.com forward slash and then your business name. YouTube channels are free. You can brand them to look beautiful like the Pottery Barn YouTube channel, or you can keep them simple with YouTube's templates. You don't need a ton of expensive equipment to do a video for your business. Um, you can use your iPhone and you know, you're going to need a microphone. I put a resource here for you. Don't be afraid of this. All these big long words. This is an $18 microphone, high quality microphone that you can get on Amazon. Amazon has tons of lighting if you need lights to do videos or you can use daylight if you have some, some good daylight to do videos. So this doesn't have to be expensive. So the biggest question I get is, oh, I don't know, video, what do I talk about? And I don't want my face on video. Well, you don't have to because you can do things like product reviews. Number one thing that people search for when they're looking to buy a product is product review and they look for video product reviews. So anyone can do a review of a product that they sell. You can do a demo. This video right here on the right hand side is a demo of the Mighty Wallet which is a simple wallet that is made out of the um the made out of Tyvek that really tough plastic and all they did was a demo of this wallet and only hands and the wallet and that's it and it got tons of traffic to their online website you can also do history of your business you know how did you get started people love that put that on your about me page it will instantly increase your sales because it makes you trustworthy and it makes you real and people want real they don't know you from anybody when they come to your website but if they see a video on how your business got started you develop the know like and trust factor now anyone can do a video sharing tips about the products that they sell it doesn't matter what you sell. It doesn't matter where you sell it. You can find a product in your product line and share tips with your customers on how to use it. This video here, it looks really fancy. This guy has a white background behind him and he's sitting here talking about how to use these floor liners. Very, very simple. Here's one of the biggest trends in videos. They're called unboxing videos. And it's just, you know, one of those things that I guess it's like when we were a kid, we like to watch the other kids open their presents. So we're like that as adults. Look at the number of searches that people in the increase in searches for people looking for unboxing videos. So everyone can take a product, put it on a table, point a camera at that product, open up the product and describe what's in the box, show a few features of the product. No one ever needs to see your face if you're camera shy. If not, you can show your face. Why are these powerful? Because again, we are humans and human nature is an important factor in marketing. We like to see things come out of a box and it's just these unboxing videos have been extremely popular with consumers. Now there's one thing you need to know about video. You can't just shoot a video and stick it on YouTube. You have to search engine optimize your video. But it's not going to cost you any money and you don't have to hire a big agency. Search engine optimize is involved involves what I call SEO3. 
Number one, when you upload your video to YouTube, you're going to optimize your title with the product title keywords. So what's the name of your product? And you're going to put your store name here. That's it. Product title keywords and your store name. Why? Because when Google indexes these videos, they look at the title of the video. And so you want to have it optimized with the keywords that people would use to search for your product on Google. Now down here, you have more room to describe your product. And here you can put as many uh, keywords in the description as you want. You can take your product descriptions right off your product page. However, change them up a bit. Don't copy them directly from your product page. Change them up a bit so that you don't have a duplicate content issue. And then you can tag. You can put tags, keyword tags, in your video so that Again, this helps with search, en search engine optimization. So look at these three fields. And most people do not optimize their videos. So they do all this, these great videos and then no one can find them. So what you're learning here is very powerful. There's also an option, and it's up here in your add to, um, to add that annotation that I showed you that my clients at Connectables do so that that little annotation pops up on your video. That's a Google feature. You don't have to do any special editing that sends people directly to your store. This is, I mean, video, I know so many people are like, oh, I'm, I'm so scared. I've shown you simple methods to do videos that anyone can do. You don't have to worry about this and you don't have to have a professional setup. I mean, it's great if you do, but it is not required. The quality of the content and the search engine optimization are what matters here. Now, once you do your video, what do you do with it? Well, you leverage it and you push it out to multiple channels. Number one, you can pin your video to Pinterest. Why? Because videos pinned on Pinterest refer more traffic directly to websites than even videos that are found on YouTube. So you might say, well, why should I put it on YouTube? Well, because it's the number two search engine on the web. So you've got to start, you've got to have a home base for your videos. So you want to host that video on YouTube. You can use that. Then you can push that video out to Pinterest, to Facebook, looking for content to put on your Facebook page, one video, multiple duty. You can put that video, same video on your website. You can put that video in your eBay listing. You can put that video on your blog. The only place that you cannot put that video as of now is on Amazon. Um, I get this question a lot. People will say, well, I see um, retailer videos on the Amazon product page and you do see those, but I want you guys to know that it's actually a violation of Amazon's policies. So even though you see them there, you don't want to do that because you don't want to jeopardize your Amazon account. I'm hoping that with these new Amazon brand pages that they're coming out with in 2013, that you're going to be able to use those to upload your product videos and get customers engaged that way. But for now, don't push those videos out to Amazon. So simple YouTube action assignment. Number one, set up a YouTube channel in your brand name. It's very easy to do. You can just go to the YouTube help section and say, set up YouTube channel. And it's super simple. Set it up in your brand name, reserve that brand name. So someone doesn't get it. Create your first video using one of the strategies we've talked about here today and push it out to YouTube, Pinterest, and your website and let that video go to work for you. Seven by 24 marketing your products. One time effort, multiple marketing channels, ongoing seven by 24 marketing for you. Same thing with Pinterest. We do it once and we let it go to work for us for the duration. So we're going to talk quickly about infographics and then we're, and Instagram, and then I'm going to open it up for questions. So infographics, I know you've all seen infographics, these big, giant, tall, cool graphical representations of information. These are highly, highly shareable and they're the most underutilized resources resource for retailers. It's shocking how many retailers have not discovered the infographic power. These things get shared like crazy. They get picked up by the media. Wouldn't it be nice to have an infographic of your products picked up by a big magazine or by home and garden television? 
that's what a good infographic can do. And even though you think, oh, they look hard, they're very easy to do. So what do you do with an infographic? Well, here's an example of REI. REI does great content, by the way, you guys, if you want a good example of how to do high quality content, see what they're doing at REI.com. They've, they've got it down. You can share tips on how to use your products. You can promote a lifestyle or experience. You can introduce people to your new products. So you can see here that REI is basically very cleverly telling people, here's what you do with all these products. Hmm, I wonder where we're gonna go buy them, REI. I love this one, WD-40. How interesting a product can that be, right? Well, they've done this really colorful, cool infographic survival guide of should there be a natural disaster and they've listed all 10 different types what could you use your wd-40 for and it's actually really clever and this one got shared like crazy and it's a can of lubricant and they did a great infographic that put wd-40 back in the mind of the consumer when you're doing an infographic where do you get your information well Wherever you're getting your information, whether you've done your research or you're pulling in information about different products from other places on the web, you're going to put a little credit box at the bottom with the sources wherever you got your statistics or, you know, uh, if you pulled information from your different product pages. Look at what REI did. They just have product page, product page, product page, product page, all links back to their other content. Here's a great one for Halloween products. You know, what are the most popular costumes? This kind of stuff gets shared on Facebook, shared on Pinterest. People love it. Customers engage with it. And it's really inexpensive and easy to do. Here are three resources for you. PictoChart has an option for you to either create your own infographics with their templates, or you can have them create, it, create them for you for very reasonable price. Same thing with infogr.am. You can have them create infographics for you or you can create your own infographics. Super easy. All you do is put in the content. You can import charts, whatever. You do not have to be a designer to do this. Anyone can create an infographic because these two places do the template and design work for you. You just point and click at whatever you want. And so you can do these for free or very inexpensively. If you want to do something and have someone else do it for you, uh, 99designs does infographics for fairly reasonably priced as well. Everybody should have an infographic on their site in Q1 of 2013 and watch the power of how often that infographic gets shared. So infographic action assignment, all you need to do is figure out, well, what's my upcoming season? Hmm, what do we want to promote? Hey, let's create an infographic around this. Get some text, some tips, some new information about the products that you sell, put those in the infographic, and then post it. Post it on Facebook and, incur and tell people, share this infographic, and people will share it. You will be amazed at how many times people will share infographics. So super easy. All right, now you guys are getting like the fire hose here. I want you guys to see all the opportunities for visual marketing. Instagram, I just want to touch on because this is the next one that's up and coming. A lot of people don't know about Instagram. A lot of people have heard about it. Basically what it is, it's a smartphone app that is like Twitter with pictures. So you basically share images. But Instagram is one of the rapid growing visual marketing platforms or visual content platforms. In fact, Facebook thought so highly of it they just bought it for a billion dollars and even though it's just a smartphone app 50 percent of the world's top brands are currently on instagram now the instagram demographics skew a little bit differently so you're going to need to figure out if your brand demographic is on instagram and you can see here it's broken down by age and gender tends to skew to, you know, kind of the under 35 demographic. So if those are the buyers of your products, then, you know, you want to get on Instagram, set up an account and see what the brands are doing. In order of priority, if I was going to prioritize your marketing for you, number one, Pinterest, number two, YouTube. Get those down first, then infographic, and then just familiarize yourself with Instagram. 
So, you know, we've covered a ton of ground. I know we're getting short on time here. I'm going to put the call out for questions. Question came in, in your experience, does YouTube compare to Vimeo for marketing purposes? It's quality in search engine results. Vimeo is a different platform for video. From a purely search engine standpoint, the YouTube videos get indexed far more frequently and more frequently get first page indexing than the Vimeo videos. A lot of people like Vimeo because they like the interface and it's got some um, marketing features that YouTube doesn't have. But for someone getting started, you definitely have to have that presence on YouTube because being the number two search engine, that's where people are going to look for it. And Google actually is indexing those. So you can start your presence on YouTube. And then if you want to do some specialized marketing videos, you definitely could do that on Vimeo. Another question came in, what if you don't have a website? Can you have Pinterest users contact you by email? So you have to be selling something online. So for example, you've got to be either be in a marketplace and link to your product over there, or you have to have a website. You cannot have a Pinterest user contact you directly via email. The only way a Pinterest user could contact you is like if they left a comment on your pin, but that's not really how the, the community works. So really the point of contact for any type of purchase is going to be your website or whatever the communication uh, vehicle is for the marketplace. Does Pinterest show up on Google Analytics as a source? In Google Analytics, you'll go to the traffic sources section and then you'll go to referrals. And in that list of referring domains, you'll see Pinterest.com as the domain referring traffic to your site. Now, it's not going to break out specifically the traffic by pin or board. There are some Pinterest Analytics tools that do that type of thing. Uh, one that I like is Pimfluencer, and that's one that does, in addition to analytics, it does a whole bunch of different things. So there are several tools out there that you can use, and actually more and more coming into the marketplace now because Pinterest is such a serious traffic driver. If you guys want more information on this, I actually have a Pinterest newsletter called Pinsider Tips. And you can actually get more information on the analytics and things. If you go to lisasatara.com, you'll see that Pinsider Tips opt-in box. It's usually email tips like once a week. And they're not long emails. It's literally like, here's a tip of the week for Pinterest. So that's one of the things I talk about in there is reporting. Question came in for Instagram. If you already have a personal page, how can I add a business page? I'm thinking you mean Pinterest. So for Pinterest, if you already have a personal page, you need to convert to a business account. And basically it's just a two-step process where it take it basically takes your personal account and turns it into a business account. If you've been using Pinterest, your Pinterest profile for business and it's branded in your business, convert that to the business account and then set up a personal account just as a as an individual account video length oh great question shorter the, the shorter the better so if you can do a short product video that's 60 seconds or less perfect you don't want to do something that's you know three minutes four minutes five minutes long because people won't watch it uh, unless you're doing, you know, kind of a little vignette that's like some really entertaining, high production thing, you want to make them short, concise, and you're better off doing three 60 second videos and focusing on a different feature of a product than you are to do one three minute video and try and put all the features of a product in. Most people, when you get past the one minute, one and a half minute mark, they will click away and jump right in. When you're doing your videos, and we could do a whole thing on how to create good videos, literally jump right in. You know, hi, this is Robert from blah, blah, blah. And today we're going to unbox a blah. And then you unbox it and tell them a little bit about it. And, you know, for more information on this product, visit us at and then you give your website URL. That's another tip. When you're doing your video, you always want to put your website URL up front. So introduce yourself, 
and where you're from, what's your website URL, and when you close out your video, put your website URL on the back end because even though they've got that visual, hearing it from you cements it in their mind. Well, these have been some fantastic questions here today. Thank you everyone for submitting such great questions. And we're going to wrap up today's presentation. Before we do, I just want to let everyone know that if you have any questions about Pinterest, looking for more information, there's a couple of resources you can take advantage of. I have uh, Pinsider Tips, my newsletter at lisasatora.com and you'll see the Pinsider Tips newsletter sign up there over at my website. Also, for those of you who are ready to get started with Pinterest, we also have a video series, a five video series course called PinterestFreeCommerce.com. Now, this is the only Pinterest for e-commerce video series available on the marketplace. In this video series, I walk you step by step through setting up your Pinterest presence. You can literally watch the video, stop the video, set up your Pinterest presence, you will have your entire business presence set up in under 90 minutes. And I show you how to create boards, I explain how to search and optimize the boards, give you tons of different examples, no matter what product you sell, no matter where you sell it, you'll be able to replicate the examples and get some really great ideas for creative ways to market your business on Pinterest. We also go into the ins and outs of marketing or of using Pinterest to market your products in the marketplace, so on Amazon and on eBay. So PinterestFreeCommerce.com, it's not only an excellent step-by-step -step resource that will get you up and running, but it also gives you a ton of marketing strategies so you have a lot of ideas for ways to market your business. So uh, you can get more information about that at PinterestFreeCommerce.com. So like Lisa mentioned, I know we're getting to the end here. We're a little short on time, um, but I did want to take a moment to thank everyone for being here today. I hope that you feel that the last hour was very educational for you. I know it was for me. Um, so thank you so much to Lisa for being here and for sharing her extensive experience with all of us. That was wonderful information. And I also want to mention, as Lisa did, that on this final slide here, you can see more ways to find information about Lisa and the information that she has. Um, LisaSatora.com. Pinterest for ecommerce.com as well. And then for anyone who is not familiar with Monsoon Commerce, please check us out at monsooncommerce.com. You can also find this presentation in the next couple of days. We'll post it on our YouTube page, um, and you can see that link there as well. And as I mentioned, we'll also follow up with an email in the next few days that includes the specific link to this webinar, recorded webinar, on, a, on the YouTube page, um, and also some additional information for you. And one other thing I wanted to mention just before we close is that, as Lisa had mentioned, this is part one of a three-part series on content marketing. Um, the next two, one will be in February, February 20th, that will be on social content marketing, and the third will be on March 13th, and that will be on written and crowdsourced content marketing. So you'll receive invitations for those in the next few days as well. Please don't miss them. We will record those as well, but of course, we love to have you here live with us. Um, and thank you again for being here, and that's all I have. Lisa, do you have any Anything else to add? Start simple, but start today. Really important. You can't depend on the marketplaces to market for you. You have got to take your marketing under your own control and you need to actually implement it. And so you don't have to overthink it. I've shown you really simple strategies. If you just do what you learned in this last hour, you will be well on your way to having a good marketing strategy that's going to attract new customers, that's going to engage existing customers, that will drive traffic to your website or to the marketplace, and that will drive more sales conversions in 2013. Thank you everyone for being here and I look forward to uh, part two of our series. Thanks everyone.